Yeah, so we've had a lot to cover today. Uh, now, we're, I guess I'd love to wind down. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a n n nice, uh, you know, cup in a of nice tea way. in a nice way mm. to wind down and just to bring everything to a close by getting to understand a bit of an insight into some of the the topics that are miscellaneous. Relevant to us though, aren't they? This relevant, way, yeah. yeah, very relevant, so perhaps uh, but different. Open. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to discuss one of your favourite subjects, Zara? Yes, pets. Yes. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're going to be discussing pets and um, <laughs> the permissibility of keeping pets, I guess, from a historical perspective, the imams, um, and also extending that, I guess, to um, the respect that we should have to animals. Yeah, I yeah. think, um, sadly, that, you know, I think this topic is important because um, a lot of people from outside our faith don't understand how we do, how the prophets, how our you know, guides have shown us the respect towards animals and creation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it would be a good opportunity for us to say, well, actually, you know, give some examples from yourself that, you know, um, how, how animals are treated with respect and we're not barbaric and out to just eat them all the time. Yeah. Indeed. So, um, and yeah, and I had a personal question because um, I have a, a, a neighbor's cat at the moment. Mm. Oh, um, cat sitting. I'm not cat sitting. No, I've been left with this cat who's who was abandoned when she was a child, baby, a kitten. Um, obviously, a baby and a kitten. She's a kitten, um, and she um, then was adopted by my neighbours, and then they've moved now. So they've left this abandoned kitten. Um, well, she's a cat now. Um, it's quite horrible, isn't it, to move? Yeah, and, and, and actually, this this, <laughs> nice. this cat has abandonment issues. She doesn't trust okay. human beings, oh. um, and. She comes to the back of my garden and she will just stare into my house and it's her way of saying, give me food. So I really want her to come into the house because it's winter, it's cold. Um, and I'm afraid of, you know, people saying, well, the cat hair, the prayer, permissibility. So again, perhaps other people have that query and they want to have, um, you know, maybe own a pet, a cat. What's the rulings? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, the rulings I'm going to be taking are from the Rasal Amriya of Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. Um, and keeping pets in general is actually mustahab, it's encouraged. Birds, uh, fish, um, you know, they're, they're really encouraged to keep. Yes, it does get a bit problem uh, problematic with, problematic with uh, certain other animals, which mm -hmm. we'll discuss. Yeah. Um, one thing that we can, we can really understand and we know which is haram to keep is, is a pig. Um, you can't keep one of them as a pet. I don't think anybody would. To you wouldn't want to, no. You wouldn't want to because of the nijasa. Mm. Now, the other animal that is also najis is the dog. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that we can't keep dogs? Not necessarily. Um, we can't keep dogs as pets, but if there is a reason you need a dog, or you require a dog. For example, if you're blind, mm. you need a guide dog. Yeah. You're allowed to have one. Uh, if you live in an area where there's a high risk of, of robberies and stuff, security dogs. Just before you move on to security, with the whole blind dog thing, do, do the Nagasa rules also apply? Or because you can't see it, you can't verify it, therefore? I would assume, yes. I haven't, I haven't come across something different. So for example, we're allowed to keep that dog, yes. as you mentioned, right? Uh -huh. um, but of course, as a, as a, a, a person with that disability, I'll have a carer. Yes. Now that carer obviously would have to be careful of the najasa of the dog. Indeed. But then does that najasa also apply to the person who is actually inflicted? Yes. I mean, if, if that person, that blind person, has to go pray, yeah, he'd have to go ask the carer, is there any dog here on me? Because I'm not allowed to pray with dog not the dog on. licking the mm -hmm. person the dog licking, perhaps not seeing If it. the dog licks, they just wash it. But uh, if if it, they lick part of the, this, they mm. and oh, I don't feel I don't see clothing. it because I'm blind. You, you, the blind person would have to probably ask the carer that look has uh, can you see any evidence right okay. of dog hair or, or you know dog um, you know saliva mm. on me. Mm. Um, so it applies to a certain extent. Indeed, to the extent that you can the best, see. It. The best thing to do is you actually have your own room for mm. prayers, a dedicated uh, room for prayers, and also dedicated garments for prayer. Yeah. That way, you always know mm, that yeah. these garments are not in contamination with any of the, you know, animal, mm. and neither is the room, mm. uh, and you can go pray and with that peace of mind, yeah. uh, with that, you know, there's there's no um, nejasa on me. And furthermore, the purpose of you having a dog, I, I was for security. Okay, I can't get a cat to secure my uh, no. my garden, nor can I get uh, a parrot. 
Um, one could argue, why don't you get CCTV and things like that? Mm. I can. There's no issue with that. But the CCTV prevents... But you could have a person on their own who wants a dog because they're scared. They're living on their own. They're elderly and they want something that's going to perhaps a, an intruder in their home. I mean, there's lots of... Yeah, the, I mean, so this, this is a valid reason for you to yeah. have a dog. And, mm. and obviously you have a reasonable dog, so, you know. Uh, I've, I've uh, read in studies that the dogs that the most of these people who do burglaries are scared of are the small ones. I was going to say because they, they make yeah. the most noise. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's what they say. They make the most. Noise. They're, they're not intimidated by dogs. They, they, they'll throw them, uh, you know, a piece of meat or this mm. or that. They say the small ones are really annoying. They make a lot of noise and they don't, um, you know, mm. settle down. And they're, they're, that's the ones that they really don't like. Mm. Uh, but there is a lot of issues in regards to Nijasa and hair, and there's also diseases. That, that they can they can bring in mm. uh, fleas. Mm. Yeah, they can. So th th there's a hygiene issue as well in regards to having animals such as a dog mm. in your house. But other animals, uh, for example, like you were discussing, a cat. Cats are really clean. Uh, I have a cat. It's that it, they're more clean than humans. I'm not even joking. Mm. Mm. These, these things are, are phenomenal in, in regards. Do they have to fleas. My cat don't. <laughs> and even if they do, they probably make it they can get they can, fleas. They can. They so can. So can a human being. They can get nits in their hair. But it's all about it's all about hygiene. Uh, but my cats are really really clean. Mm. Um, you know, like even when they go to the toilet, they're actually ashamed of what they've done. That's why they cover it up. You see, cats always really? cover up. Yeah, when when they, when mm. they like you know they, they they cover it up because they're actually embarrassed. Oh, that's, I made that. Oh, 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 amazing. they're so clean. Mm. Um, and with with cats, um, some may argue with the, the salah issue. Now, say Sadiq Shirazi, Allah, he says that mm. when you are praying, and if you notice cat hair on you. You stop where you are, you remove the hair, and you carry on. Mm. It doesn't make your salah batter. It doesn't, uh, you know, cause any other mm. issues. Mm. If you prayed, uh, and later on you found that there was cat hair, uh, I believe that you don't have to, to re repeat oh, the prayer. Right. It's okay. Because I always wondered about cat hair, because if you have a domestic cat that's indoors, doesn't really go out, um, and there's a hair, then, you know, and then they, people would say that that would invalidate your prayer, mm. you can't have a cat. Exactly. But I have guinea pigs and, you know, when I'm petting them, I find guinea pig hair on my yeah. clothes. And I was thinking, well, what's the, what is actually the difference, apart no, from they're in a cage? This, and so guinea pig hair is okay to have, to pray on? I've not heard it's yeah, not disallowed to... With, with, with animal hair, we have to have uh, hadith and, and fatawa specific to that animal hair. Mm. Right. So there's nothing to say all animal hair. Mm. Or, okay. or anything like that It has to be the specific They have to give us Each animal And so far There's been fatawa On dogs and cats Right That's it So we so know with, with dog hair Batil With cat mm. hair uh, Remove it and carry on If you prayed with it And later on you found out It was cat it's hair okay. You don't need to repeat wow. It's okay It's not a problem wow. So I can bring in the cat Look I guess look, the, whole, the whole reason why we ask Is because you made a great point Off, off air um, And in terms of um, Children mm. And pets um, it's a whole different ball game because you can you can start to teach young children about emotional intelligence, about how to yeah. react to different things, people. But then when you get a pet involved, yeah. they they then start to feel that nurturing ability to yeah. care for something, know when that that animal is uh, annoyed or upset or hungry or whatever, and that gives them those those Definitely. skills to be able to develop more emotional intelligence yeah. better than, so, so that's really important. than games or yeah. iPads think, or stuff. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I think with, with animals, um, animals themselves, as well as human beings, um, they can sense emotion yeah. Yeah. and they can sense feeling. That's amazing. And, and, and you know, for children to develop body language yeah. as well, uh, to learn how to care, how to show affection, um, also responsibilities. Exactly. Mm. They say if you want to keep your children grounded, put your responsibilities on their yeah. shoulders. So if you give them a, yeah. a pet and say, right, you need to take care of this, you need to make sure it's fed and, and so forth. It they like it, don't they? Sure. Children actually rather really like, yeah. yeah, I'm grown up now. I'm yeah, they do. They like that sort of stuff. They really do feel, feel a sense yeah. of responsibility. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow. And that's the thing with kids. If you give them that responsibility, that they, they, they feel like they're part of the family or they feel like they're growing up, especially at an at age of around maybe 9, 10, 11, where hormones are started to kick yeah. in and then they yeah. feel like they're bigger than they actually are. Yeah. If you give them that sense of responsibility, it teaches them tenfold what they can learn Definitely. again from iPads. Indeed. and It's, it's a whole another discussion we can have, but in terms yeah. of children and their, their development um, and interaction with, with, yeah. with, with pets is key. I mean, I, th I think even with um, people say about guinea pigs, but you know, what's the point of them? But they are actually really emo like they will sit outside when we're in the family talking and they enjoy it. And when we're not in the home, they'll be you know, hiding away in their little boxes. And, really? And you know, they really do pick up. And, and so I was reading about what makes 
that's what's a sign of a guinea pig being happy. They don't apparently sleep a lot, but they will, um, they close their eyes and they're very drowsy and you can tell they, and it, it, it's nice to see that you can give that comfort to an animal mm -hmm. because otherwise it'd probably be eaten outside anyway. It's yeah. that left in yeah, South America. Yeah, enough foxes in the... In well, exactly. Yeah. And I think, I almost feel nice. like it's, you know, if you're giving that love to an animal, I sometimes wonder, do they know that you're, you know, it's been taken care of? And oh, maybe in its little heart, it gives it like, you know, God bless you, like, mm. you know, taking yeah, care of they, they, they I'm going to sound make, crazy. But yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe they do a little dog for you, maybe. Do they actually, do they actually feel, um, if, for example, after three years of having a, a cat, because yeah. I remember a, a relative's house, we, from the first day this cat, well, the first two weeks this cat was born, it was born into this house, uh, in a relative's house. And the first maybe six months, it was, of joy, like you, the, the mm. cat would run around, you could play games with it. After about six, maybe a, a year, it just became a very boring cat, comes in and out, does his own thing. Th that's, that's quite common. Cats. Yeah, no, no, I know, I realise that, yeah, and then it just does his own thing. Mm. But does that cat still have an affiliation with the family, certain key members definitely, of that family? Definitely. And for example, the question is, after three years, they had to let go of this cat. They had to, like, mm. not release it, but give it to another family. Mm. Does that cat, will that cat actually feel? That connection lost? With, or with cats, they're so disloyal. As long as you feel it, they're oh, happy. Okay. But I can tell you, uh, for my cat, when my mum goes to Pakistan, when my mum goes to Pakistan, she goes for like a long time. She goes for four or five months. Mm. When she returns... The cat will show. The, the, the cat, yeah, yeah. She, she, she runs to my mum. And then she so starts, yeah, she starts w walking around her feet, yeah, and, feet yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then meowing and be like, yeah, can you feel so that, that, well? yeah, that yeah. neighbour's cat we've got, she's, um, I said she was a little kitten when she was abandoned. You can still see the effect on that ch you know, kitten, mm. keeps saying child, kitten um, being abandoned and now not trusting humans. But then when her owner went away for a few days, um, she was sort of in the garden. And when he said when he returned, she was so happy to see him sat in his lap, let him stroke her, and she's mm. not affectionate. So it does impact animals. They do have that, um, you know, intelligence in them to to obviously respond mm. to to human beings. And I think it's, I don't know. I feel if you do show them that love, it is, if you do it for the sake of Allah has created this, mm. um, you know, these pets and animals. Then you know, if by us showing that love, and I'm sure there's there's examples that you could possibly give about that whole bait. The biggest Holy example Prophet. we can give is about Abdul Al Hussein and his horse Zuljana. Oh wow! You know, that's the biggest example yeah. I can give. That that's a very special, unique mm -hmm. relationship. And you know how the, the horse wouldn't leave the body. Mm. Um, the horse would, 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 would run circles around the Abu yeah. to protect yeah. it. Even when it arrived to Karbala, the, the, yeah. the horse, the horse wouldn't, wouldn't go for. Yeah, it wouldn't move. It um, wouldn't go forward. That's when Imam Hussein knew this is the place yeah. they had to. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that, that's that's a clear and big indication yeah. of interaction between humans and, and, and animals. And furthermore, we have so many stories of the Emma mm. and Rasulullah Sallallahu in terms of, of birds, in terms of. Um, you know, there, there was one with the Imam Sadiq uh, at Fajr time. Birds will, will be tweeting outside his, his house. Mm. Uh, and people will be like, why are they tweeting? What's going on? And he will say, they've come to ask for their risk. I have to go give them food. And he will mm. give them food. Um, there's others. You were talking about a deer. Yeah. Um, Mama, would you like to elaborate? Them, right? No, in case it's wrong. So, <laughs> But what I would say to is that um, I read the story in China. No, sorry, it was in Russia and Georgia that this dog um, got misplaced from its um, owner. Mm. And um, what happened is the owner, they were separated for three years. And this dog was in this, one of the squares. And um, the owner's friend saw, you know, there's a dog that looks similar to your dog. Do you want to come and see if it's your dog? And um, so the man went and the way the dog ran to its owner after three years mm. and was whimpering and it was almost like crying, crying and telling yeah. a story that, where have you been? And, and it was so emotional to yeah. think that this animal three years was on the streets, homeless, and then found its owner. Wow. It's also Great. how we do treat animals um, yes. in some parts of the world that, you know, it's, you know, we're teasing them, we find it funny, and it's really not, because, you know, I, I think in this, this country, in, um, around bonfire night, they'd actually strapped a cat with fireworks. What, and, you know, oh, why horrible. would you do wow. that? You know, it's that's just so, so inhumane. I, th I think it's a good time to mention that from our culture as well, we come back, they, mm. we don't really have animal rights. And we don't have respect for animals. They they just look at them and they think we can do as we please. Where we really need to appreciate exactly. and recognize animal rights, especially from an Islamic perspective. Where you know we had, we had one episode we were talking about fishing and you're not allowed mm. uh, to fish mm. for sport because yeah. it causes harm to the yeah. fish. Yeah. So, so you know you we're not consider. allowed to bring harm no. to to other creations. This is not acceptable. And I think if you see a stray animal, feed it. You know, it's Definitely. nothing. It's it's you know a creational god. So surely you should. It's so ironic that there's there's sports like for example. Pigeon shooting, yes, um, or fox hunting, and that seemed to be, you know, either okay or, or not okay or whatever it is. But 
you know, mm. things like halal where, or fishing where mm. we actually, we have the best interest of the animal a, in mind. Um, and that seems to be barbaric or mm. something along the lines. Anyway, there's another thought. Um, on that note, yep. any more questions, Zara? No, no. No, I think... Um, I'm happy I've, I can... Get a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Really, well, look, no really, really appreciate your time once again, Sayed. Um, hopefully, look forward to in many more episodes to come. Thank you very on much. that note, um, from myself and Zara and, and all from Morning Barakah team, uh, we wish you uh, a blessed day. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.